Um, of course, move on. We're going to, of course, talk about ancient Egypt, like I said, about the uh, age of pyramids, which, of course, is referred to as the Old Kingdom. Uh, and um, there's, of course, the slide up there. And, um, yeah, the Old Kingdom uh, is, of course, one of those three historical periods of Egypt that we talked about last week, how Egypt's broken down on uh, the three main periods, Old Kingdom, Middle Kingdom, New Kingdom. Uh, last week, we had kind of gone through and we had talked about the background of Egypt, like the early history of it, geography of the Nile River Basin and why it was so important to Egypt. Uh, we talked about also the uh, traditional religion and gods of Egypt. Then I talked about also um, mummification, how the Egyptians practice uh, burying their dead. Uh, so that's the most of the bulk of the, of, of the things we covered uh, last week uh, on Wednesday. Uh, so today I'm going to talk about like mostly just about the old pyramids, the old, the old kingdom with the age of pyramids. And um, I'll talk about mostly the third and fourth dynasties, because those are the two main dynasties that probably built the most famous of the pyramids. Now, what is the um, dynasties that are, oh, why is it called age of pyramids? That's kind of fairly easy question, but obviously because they built the majority of the pyramids in ancient Egypt, which I think upwards of maybe close to 80 may have been built at one point. And um, pyramids in Egypt were built up to the Middle Kingdom. Uh, however, the peak of pyramid building was the fourth dynasty. That one, of course, is one of like four major dynasties that made up uh, the Old Kingdom, which was third, fourth, fifth, and sixth dynasties. Uh, and um, we'll talk about Emotep, the guy that, you know, built, you know, the first step pyramid. He was uh, uh, some kind of some type of powerful minister uh, that was under a third dynasty pharaoh. So they think that's when the first step pyramids were built. And the peak of the pyramid age was around the fourth dynasty with the um, fourth dynasty uh, great pyramids of Giza or Giza pyramids which were built outside of Cairo. Khufu, Khafre, Menkari, of course, they're the ones that built those. And then also, we'll, we'll talk briefly for a few minutes, of course, on the famous Sphinx or Great Sphinx, just one of the most mysterious um, things that was built, you know, on the Giza Plateau near Cairo. Very, very strange and enigmatic, you know, uh, royal statue. So we'll go into that and talk about that. And then I'll also get into, and I guess the beginning, we'll also talk about like some of the typical type of early type of tombs that they also built uh, as well. Now, I did want to add something that's not in there, but um, uh, the Egyptians did have something called a necropolis. I don't know if you know what that is. Um, and necropolises were um, put up here, but these were um, uh cities of the dead uh, that were built by the Egyptians a long time ago. And uh, most of them, uh, if you study about it, uh, were built uh, on the West Bank uh, of the Nile River in Egypt. Uh, these are various burial grounds where Egyptian kings were buried and powerful officials and ministers uh, as well. Uh, these are examples of um, various necropolis sites throughout Egypt. Abydos, uh, which was considered really the, one of the oldest uh, necropolis sites that dates back to the time of King Mar uh, King Menes or King Narmer. Uh, Saqqara, which is near Cairo and what is the ancient capital of uh, Memphis. Midam and Dashur are about 50 miles south of Cairo. Uh, those were sites where they built pyramids like Dashur is more famous for like the Red Pyramid. Also, the Bent Pyramid uh, was built there. Of course, Giza also included, too, as well. And also, uh, it's not this time period, but during the New Kingdom, you know, they built like the Valley of the Kings, where they went more towards building rock-cut tombs because, as you know, over time, the pyramids were robbed, you know, by various tomb robbers. And so that's why the Egyptians stopped building them. Um, 
Oh, why were they built on the West Bank? Students usually ask me this question sometimes, but uh, it's because of um, Egyptian uh, mythology and religious beliefs. And uh, the belief was that um, where the sun set, like in the West, uh, that's where the god Ra would, you know, make its journey uh, across the sky and then set in the West. And then, of course, the belief with the uh, Egyptians was that uh, at nighttime, uh, the god Ra would journey through the underworld and then get reborn uh, and come up again. And so the belief was that people's souls were immortal and went to the West. Uh, and so that's why they buried people to the West, you know, West of the Nile. Now, talking about early tombs of Egypt, uh, in, in Egypt, you'll find a lot of these um, mud brick tombs uh, from like around the time of King Menes all the way up to the New Kingdom, uh, which are called a mastaba or mastaba. And uh, these are a type of um, mud brick burial tomb uh, where it's um, the term uh, mastaba uh, was a term that originated from the Arabs who took over Egypt years ago. And the word uh, mastaba means either mud bench or stone bench because it obviously was made of mud or mud brick type stone. Uh, and then um, it looks like something you could sit on, like a bench. So hence the name uh, being used. Then the Egyptians would call it Persit, Persit which meant um, either eternal house or house of eternity, because uh, it was believed to be this burial structure uh, that would help preserve your mummy uh, so that your soul would stay intact in the afterlife. I uh, usually would include some kind of mud brick structure over it. Uh, and they would build a uh, some kind of shaft going down into the earth where they put your burial chamber down here with the mummy. And then they would put things in there for the afterlife, like food and other things you would need, they believe. Uh, and then uh, they would, of course, build the structure on top of the actual burial chamber. Uh, and then um, some of them would even have like a chamber inside, which might be used for like, like a mortuary chamber to mummify someone's corpse. Uh, and sometimes they might even have like a some kind of offering chapel where you might go in and give offerings to the gods uh, and so on. So uh, mastabas uh, were around forever. Um, some people think that the mastaba is like the, the uh, early evolution of what would, be, what would be the pyramid later. I think some people believe that the pyramid came from the idea of stacking mastabas up. And um, um, most of them are come in different sizes. Like this is kind of a decent size, but some are like huge. It's almost the bottom of a base of a, of a, of a pyramid, you know. And uh, some of them were built from the time of, um, like I said, King Manaz, Narmer, uh, some of the early tombs, like, like tombs at uh, Abydos were mastabas originally. Uh, of course, at the Giza complex, there's a lot of mastabas there. And, of course, they still built them maybe up to the time of, like, the New Kingdom and all that. So that was the first type of tomb that they built in Egypt. And then over time, they began to stack up, you know, start using stone instead of mud brick. And so that's why a lot of the um, pyramids later in Egypt, you know, are st still exist. They're still in decent shape because of the use of stone. A lot of the uh, mastabas, they've had to reconstruct, which this is likely a reconstructed one. They've got some that are like, you know, falling apart because they never rebuilt them. Uh, then if you move to the third dynasty, uh, of course, there's a, there's a famous pharaoh, which they talked about in the video, which is King Zoser, uh, who also is sometimes called Netriket. Uh He was a very powerful king of what is the third dynasty, one of the first dynasties in the old kingdom. Uh, it's a debate about whether he's the second king or he actually founded it. There's a big debate about which it is. Um, but uh, his statue is on the right. That is considered one of the oldest statues of an Egyptian pharaoh, which that statue is now in the um, 
Egyptian Museum in Cairo. Uh, and um, during his reign, which was sometime they think in the mid 27th century BC, he constructed a um, what is now a step pyramid, which you see here, uh, which is called different names. I think the common name is Pyramid of Zoser, but some people call it the Step Pyramid of Zoser. Uh, and this particular building, of course, became one of the first um, stone buildings ever constructed in the world. It's like one of the oldest. Uh, and for a long time, it was actually one of the tallest structures uh, in the world, built to a height of about 205 feet tall. Uh, it is known for having a rectangular base, you can see. So it's not exactly square like, you know, pyramids are later. And it's like a six-step pyramid. Uh, it looks like the bottom part's kind of falling apart. They have been doing, you saw in the video, they've been kind of working on it and trying to fix it up uh, to maybe what it looked like uh, originally. They don't think that Zoser uh, originally was going to build a um, step pyramid. They think he was going to construct a mastaba, uh, which you can see here. But for some reason, you know, either he decided to do it or maybe Emotep may have decided to do it. But uh, they think that he went to design that instead. And so that led to eventually the influence of this pyramid on other pyramids, of course, later as a whole. Uh, of course, we were uh, talking about uh, in the video about uh, Emotep. Um, there's not much, there's not a whole lot known about e Emotep. They think he was some kind of chancellor uh, of, um, of what is uh, uh, King Zoser. Uh, and um, there's kind of like a governor or minister of some type. Uh, Emotep, of course, is famous for a bunch of things. Uh, they believe he was like a polymath, uh, kind of this genius uh, in Egypt that was a like a priest of some type. He was a doctor. Uh, he was a, some kind of engineer, an architect. Probably knew mathematics, obviously, uh, do some kind of engineering and all that. So he was like a like a kind of like a Egyptian Aristotle or something like that. And um, they consider him later, you know, in Egypt to be ancient Egypt anyway, to be the so-called father of um, Egyptian medicine. And he was later deified uh, as a god. And, uh, of course, he showed up in a lot of Hollywood movies, which is true. Like, uh, I think it's the 1932 uh, The Mummy movie with Boris Karloff. I, mean, I don't know if you've ever seen that. It was a black and white movie. But that was the original movie where he was kind of like a character. And then they've made, they made, of course, a bunch of recent ones. Uh, like the mummy with Brendan Fraser, I know was the probably the most popular one now. Um, that came out later. Universal Pictures, I think, did that one. I'll show you a little clip of that <laughs> kind of at the end of that video. Um, so, so anyway, I don't know if that's the same person, but that's kind of where they get the idea of the actual character in there. So anyway, continuing, with, of course, talking. So that was the so-called first pyramid ever built. Uh, as a whole. And like I said, that pyramid uh, influenced other pyramid design, uh, of course, later. So what happened next uh, in the fourth dynasty, they then started building other pyramids, which these, I guess, would be called like uh, the true pyramid or what we call the smooth sided pyramid. So they went from they went away from having steps uh, to smoothing out all the sides, which was mostly done through using expensive um, white limestone casing. And um, the most famous king that developed the first smooth side of pyramids was a king, a king named King Sneferu. You know, the Greeks also called Saurus. And Sneferu was famous as, if you know about this, he was the uh, father of King Khufu or Cheops that built the Great Pyramid. So evidently Sneferu influenced the building of the Great Pyramid later. Uh, yeah, he was a fourth dynasty pharaoh. Uh, they think he was a, like the founder of it, uh, which starts sometime at the end of the 27th century. So he's kind of in power close to about 2600 BC. And um, Snafru built, actually, they may have built three pyramids at one point, although it's kind of debated about the third one over here on the right, if he built it or not. Uh, but 
about 50 miles south of Cairo, you know, he constructed these uh, several pyramids that are there. One is called the Midum Pyramid, usually spelled M-A-I or M-E-I-D-U-M, Midum. The Midum Pyramid is some kind of step pyramid, they believe, that collapsed, or some kind of pyramid that he was working on that, that failed. Uh, but they're not sure if he built it or not. There's a theory that another uh, pharaoh of the third dynasty named, I think it's Huni, H-U-N-I, may have built it. Uh, but um, that one didn't amount to much. And, but these two here, of course, were very famous that he constructed. One, of course, is the famous Bent Pyramid, uh, which is right here. And then they have the other one, which is called the Red Pyramid. Uh, so let me go right here to this one. So the Bent Pyramid, of course, that one, of course, uh, was the first one he built that was really what we call the first smooth-sided pyramid uh, design. It was built at a site called Dashur, or Dashur, uh, which is about 50 miles uh, south of Cairo. It's kind of like a necropolis site that's there in Egypt. And it's also sometimes dubbed a nickname, which is the South Pyramid. Uh, here's another picture of, of course, a better one from a longer, far, further distance away. Uh, and um, this pyramid was built to a height of about 332 feet tall. So it was taller than some of the other, other structures that had been built at that point. And then the base of it is about 609, 619 feet, 619, 619 feet uh, on each side. So the, the width and the base of it's getting much larger uh, in design uh, overall. And um, this pyramid is famous for its strange shape, which is kind of a bent shape to it. Uh, you can see it was built with two separate um, slope angles, one on the bottom, the lower angle, it's about 54 degrees, and the upper one's around 43 degrees. So you can see here with that. Why was it done that way? They think it was done that way, um, well, I guess on purpose, but they believe it was due to the fact that the pyramid was built at too, too much of an um, abrupt angle. Like two, like 54 degrees, they realized they kept building at a 54 degree angle that they it would have collapsed. So they think that the halfway up that they switched to, to a 43 degree angle and completed it that way. But the king obviously didn't like it, and so he wasn't buried in it. Uh, of course, one thing you will notice about the bent pyramid uh, is that uh, it, of course, has the famous white limestone casing still on the outside. So that's the way they think uh, that the pyramids looked uh, in ancient Egypt, not just that one, but all the other ones that were built later. So that one was the first smooth-sided pyramid uh, ever constructed uh, in Egypt. Uh, then he, of course, built the, the last one, which was the Red Pyramid. Uh, by the way, they have different names, like this one is sometimes called the South Pyramid. And they have this one, it's called the North Pyramid. They're just kind of north and south of each other on the compass. So the Red Pyramid uh, design was the one that he would eventually be buried in, um, Snafru. Uh, and uh, this one was built to a height of about 345 feet tall, which uh, at that point was the tallest you know, pyramid ever built so far. Uh, today, it's the third tallest uh, behind the Great Pyramid and then the, the Pyramid of Khafre. So third tallest overall. Uh, the width on each side, like the, the, the length on each side, is about 722 feet. So each side is about 722 feet long uh, overall. It takes up a pretty large size, like 11, 12 acres. That's how big it is. Uh, why is it important? Uh, it's the first true pyramid constructed, really. Uh, it's the second smooth-sided one, but it's really the pyramid that the other pyramids later are copied from. So this pyramid pretty much influenced the building of the Great Pyramid that would be built next. And, um, of course, you, you notice that it's called the Red Pyramid. Uh, and um, the reason why was because, you know, most pyramids in Egypt, a lot of them were built uh, using um, quarries that were... Um, 
near uh, what is um, Cairo, a place called Tura, where they would cut out, you know, like limestone uh, to be used for the outside of the pyramid. And the insides were made of granite. They put in the, the, the better stone. Uh, and um, for some reason, they used uh, some kind of local limestone a quarry, which had like reddish iron ore in the limestone. And so it kind of gives the, the limestone kind of a reddish color to it. And that's the reason for it. Uh, however, it was supposed to have the white limestone on the outside, but you can see it's been stripped. And so now that's where the name came from. Uh, there's also another name for the Red Pyramid. It's called the Bat Pyramid. Not because Batman's in there, but uh, but um, there's that bats that live in it. And you can go into it. Uh, but, you know, watch out for the bats, <laughs> that kind of thing. So so anyway, uh, so that's the Red Pyramid. And that's the, you know, like I said, the tomb that, you know, uh, Snafu gets buried into. But like I said, they're all robbed in ancient times. Uh, they would put capstones on top, which is also called per per Permidian. Uh, and uh, they think the um, pyramids were all white. And then they think they would put this uh, granite capstone on the top, uh, which... Um, might be engraved in gold or something like that. Some people thought that, I think they, they thought that the top was, got a gold top to it and then the whole pyramid was like white, you know. So let's move on and talk more about the fourth dynasty. Now the fourth dynasty, uh, the, the greatest, you know, pyramid ever constructed was the Great Pyramid of Giza, uh, which was built by, of course, the famous king, King Khufu, who the Greeks in Herodotus called Cheops. Uh, and Khufu was a uh, pharaoh of the fourth dynasty. He was the second king, uh, the son of King Snefru, who I told you about. And um, his, his pyramid became part of a huge burial complex that they would put uh, near Cairo, which is called different names, the Giza Burial Complex, Giza Plateau, or just Giza. And it's a huge burial complex. Uh, which has numerous pyramids built there uh, with also other tombs, mastabas, uh, et cetera. And then it's also got the Sphinx down here uh, as well, running from this causeway to the Pyramid of Khafra. Uh, and um, so you've got the Great Pyramid here, you got the Pyramid of Khafra here, and the Pyramid of Menkari also here. So those are the three main so-called Giza pyramids, as they're called. And... Um, um, a little bit about, of course, Khufu's uh, Great Pyramid. Khufu's Great Pyramid uh, is the one of the only uh, original seven wonders of the world that survived, like from ancient times. Like all the other six, of course, uh, were destroyed. Uh, of course, it was the first one built, uh, and of course, the most famous of the seven. Uh, and a um, few things about the pyramid. Of course, about the height, that's been debated uh, about what the height originally is. Um, they think it's around 480 feet tall, although I've seen 481, 482 uh, as being the actual height that they think it originally was uh, constructed to in the 26th century. Uh, since then, it's been stripped, like the top of it, and also the outer limestone casing has been stripped off as well. And so because of that, the height now is more like 455 feet might be about where it is. So about 25 feet of it has been stripped off, uh, including the capstone. Uh, on each side uh, of the pyramid, uh, it's about 756 feet is the length. So times four, uh, which is something like 13 acres, I think, is how much the Great Pyramid takes up. And um, the Great Pyramid is so huge that you can put all kinds of historical, I was talking about the other class at 10 o'clock, I was saying that, you know, you can put all kinds of historical buildings in there from the U.S. Capitol building, the Superdome, uh, you can throw in Coliseum, St. Peter's Basilica, and probably some other stuff. So it's that, it's that big, and it's hard to get pictures of it because it's just so massive in size. Uh, you'll see pictures of it uh, like, um, of course, you'll see pictures like this. And people will go, hey, Great Pyramid, which is right here. Actually, the Great Pyramid is um, the one that's actually over here. It actually looks like it's over there. 
But um, sometimes the one I think the one in the middle is a great pyramid, but that's the one of uh, King Kafri, Pyramid of Kafri. Other stats about the pyramid, of course, they do think by Napoleon's time they had figured out that the actual uh, pyramid had about 2.3 million stone blocks. Uh, it was used to build it. That's a lot. Uh, with each block being in, it varies in the weight of it, but anyway, from two to six tons might be the average weight of a stone block uh, in the Great Pyramid, uh, with the ones on the bottom being the heaviest and the ones on the top being, the, of course, the lightest uh, overall. Um, I think the total tonnage is close to six million tons, <laughs> some crazy amount uh, that they had to move into place uh, to actually build the Great Pyramid. Now, there's different theories on how they built the pyramids. You know, you heard everything from they used slaves to, um, to aliens built it, <laughs> that kind of thing. Uh, Herodotus was the first, you know, writer to write about it, which he did in the histories of Herodotus. I do have a little uh, video clip, I think, my YouTube channel, kind of uh, him discussing about the, the some of the primary sources uh, that he talks about the pyramids being built. Uh, uh, Herodotus believed originally that slaves were used to build the pyramids, about 100,000. Uh, they now have kind of dis debunked that. They don't think slaves were used. Uh, they think they're, they, they use like skilled labor, likely farmers, especially during the flood season. I know they probably built, built a lot. Uh, and uh, they built in crews 24 hours a day. Uh, and uh, Herodotus also said that they use some kind of pulley systems or lev lev levers to, to move blocks from one level to you know the next. They don't think that's true either anymore. That's been debunked because that hadn't been invented yet. Uh, you know, not till Greek Roman times do you have pulley systems and lever systems and things like that. Uh, there was no scaffolding yet either. I think by the New Kingdom they have scaffolding, but they didn't have that either. So the main theory of how they were able to move blocks in the place, uh, was using brute human force. Um, they didn't have draft animals like oxen or anything like that. And so the, the, the main theory about how they did it was they used some kind of mud brick ramping system that they, you know, wrapped up to it. And they do have evidence of that, uh, like I said before, uh, at the Temple of Karnak. You know, there's evidence of them building mud brick, mud brick ramps up to sound like the pylons and stuff like that. And so that's the theory of how they, you know, move the blocks up. Uh, just, I guess the question is like, what happened to the ramps and all that, you know? So that's kind of a big debate still today. So it's a lot of mystery about, you know, the, the Great Pyramid. Uh, it is, of course, one of the most elaborate, you know, of the pyramids that was constructed. It does have numerous chambers in it, uh, which is true. Uh, it's got this... Um, false tomb chamber on the bottom, which uh, some believe was put in there to fool um, tomb robbers and to thinking that the tomb was already robbed, uh, but obviously it didn't work because the pyramid was robbed <laughs> in ancient times. Uh, there's also some other chambers, the queen's chamber. Uh, there's a theory that Arabs had a theory that it was used as like maybe a tomb of, like a burial tomb for one of uh, Khufu's like queens or whatever, but they're not sure about that. They also think they may have put a statue in there of, of Khufu, uh, which represented his uh, like his spirit in the afterworld. They also have the famous Grand Gallery, which uh, ran up into um, what is the King's Chamber. And that's the main chamber, of course. Uh, you see here where his sarcophagus was put uh, with his mummy. And then, of course, whatever kind of treasury that was put in there with with. Uh, Khufu as well. Uh, as you can see, it was robbed in ancient times, uh, including them ripping open uh, the actual sarcophagus. Uh, although uh, part of why this is all uh, chipped away here is that tourists would come in, at least, I guess a long time ago, they would chip pieces away of it and take it as a souvenir. Uh, there's very little writing, of course, uh, you'll see in the Great Pyramid or some of the Fourth Dynasty pyramids. And uh, you'll see that graffiti, uh, and they do do have like graffiti at the top of the of the of the 
uh, Bell, Bell Chamber of Khufu, where they actually have um, his name written in hieroglyphs. So, so they think it must be his, you know. Uh, although there's all kinds of theories that he didn't build it and he just borrowed off of someone else. So, but the, the main historical theory is that Khufu built the Great Pyramid. Um, now, uh, of course, the um, other, of course, famous pyramid that's just as big as Khufu's Great Pyramid is the Pyramid of Khafra, uh, or Khafri, uh, who the Greeks called Kephrin. Uh, and Kephrin was the son of um, Khufu, uh, who lived in the 26th century B.C., and his was the second largest ever constructed. Uh, it was built to a height around, I think, about maybe 10 feet shorter, so about 471 feet tall. So it's pretty massive uh, in size. Uh, and um, what is the? I think the um, the width of the width of it is um, I think it's about 706 feet is the width on each side. So roughly. Uh, the Pyramid of Khafre is 12, 13 acres in size, just as big. Of course, how you figure out which is which, you know, we get pictures of it, is, of course, the famous uh, upper casing, which is still there. You can see how the uh, white limestone casing, for some reason, was never stripped off. And that's one of the big ways you tell which pyramid is which, because they look almost similar size, you know, the Great Pyramid versus Khafre's. And so that, that gives us kind of an idea of how, you know, the pyramids may have looked at one point. Uh, and um, his pyramid is not as elaborate as Khufu's. It only has one main burial chamber inside of it uh, for Khafre. So not as much emphasis on the inside, on the interior, of course, with Khafre's pyramid versus, you know, the Great Pyramid of Giza. But both those two, Great Pyramid, Pyramid of Khafre, of course, the two largest pyramids ever constructed, of course, in Egypt and probably in the world. Now, of course, we have the famous Sphinx, or Great Sphinx, as it's also called, uh, which is at the Giza burial complex as well. Uh, this, of course, is a very mysterious royal statue uh, that was built in the 26th century B.C. And um, this Sphinx, this, this statue itself, uh, of course, they believe was built out of some kind of natural outcropping of limestone that existed here between, I guess, the Great Pyramid and what is the uh, Pyramid of Khafre. There's all kinds of theories about who built it and who's on the face of it and all of that. Uh, the theory about it is that King Khafre built it because it's part of his burial complex. Uh, there's actually a causeway that runs from basically where the Great Sphinx is to his pyramid. And so that's part of why people think that. Uh, and then they also believe that Khafre built it um, to honor King Khufu, like his father, and he put his face on it, Khufu's face, like on the actual uh, body of the Sphinx. And you can see the Sphinx is like the body of a lion, you see, uh, with the head of a man, the pharaoh. Uh, and it's believed that the lion was used as a symbol of the Sphinx uh, because it's a symbol of like like the king's power, you know, being f ferocious, uh, you know, and so on, who could destroy you and all that. Of course, there's theories that the Sphinx was used uh, or built there to help guard over, you know, the, uh, the, the pyramids and that, um, I guess, because people were mis um, superstitious. Uh, they believed uh, that um, it was always watching them, uh, like that video Hopefully you'll watch the, the documentary I gave you. Some people would call it the father of the terror and things like that, or father of terror, one of the two. And it seemed like it, whichever way you moved or whatever, he would be staring at you. Like whatever angle you're at, it seemed to be staring at you, which is kind of weird. Um, of course, it has been buried multiple times uh, in history, and it's been unburied. I know like under the New Kingdom, it was had become buried. And a king named Tutmos or Tutmos IV unburied it and put his famous uh, dream Stella there. Um, and, um, of course, you see it on more 
probably later to like more modern times you see here, you know, it's been kind of un, unburied as well. And I think like in Greek times, it had been buried and they thought it was like a statue standing up and all that. Uh, of course, its nose has been, if you know about it, shot off. They think maybe troops that occupied Egypt may have shot at it with rifles or whatever and blew the, blow the, blew the nose off. And part of the nose is in the uh, Egyptian Museum in Cairo. Not the whole thing, but part of it, I know. Um, and there's a lot of legends about the Sphinx, you know, like uh, riddles or whatever, which is probably a play off of the old Greek myth, like in the story of Oedipus, you know, about the riddle of the Sphinx and all that. But there's a belief that if you were a travel traveler traveling through, um, I guess, the lands where the Sphinx was, and you came upon the Sphinx, they would ask you a riddle, if you couldn't answer it for some reason, it would destroy you. I guess whatever riddle it is. Uh, then they have another, of course, pyramid. Of course, uh, the third of the Giza pyramids is the Pyramid of Menkari. Uh, Menkari was the son of Khafre, basically Khufu's grandson. Uh, and uh, he built the smallest of the three Giza pyramids at the Giza complex. Uh, it was built to an original height of about 215 feet now it's about 205 feet tall, and uh, I think the sides of it are not that big, about 339 feet on each side. That's the base of it. And um, it was called Mykeranos by uh, Herodotus. Uh, and um, why is it so small compared to the other pyramids? Well, Herodotus had this theory that King Khufu, which he called Cheops, and Khafre, which he called um, Kephrin, um, were like these um, um, cruel uh, monarchs, like mean kings. They forced all the people to build these huge pyramids. Uh, of course, some people think the pyramids were these um, public projects that people took pride in, you know, in constructing and things like that. And um, he thought that Menkari, or Mykeranos, as they call him, that he called him, um, was like a benevolent, nice ruler, and he didn't want to, you know, build such a huge, you know, tomb to, um, you know, for himself. And so that's why it was smaller. Uh, of course, uh, a lot of historians also think that the other two pyramids had kind of bankrupted the country, <laughs> and so he couldn't afford a bigger pyramid, so he built a smaller one. You know, so that might be the better one, reason why. But the pyramids after this period are not built as well. So Fourth Dynasty was like the peak of pyramid building on uh, Egypt. Uh, of course, here's a difference between the size of like, this is, um, of course, Khafre's pyramid and Menkari's pyramid. So you can see this one's much bigger than the other one. They do have other pyramids there. Like they've got these so-called Queen's pyramids, which are part of Khufu's great pyramid complex. Those are pyramids he built for like his wives uh, in also, I think this one was built for like his mother. <laughs> so that's interesting about that. Um, there's some other ones, I think, near uh, Khafre's Pyramid. I think they've got some small, small little pyramids. So they believe that the like wives or mothers, if they got a pyramid, it was, you know, not like it wasn't like a tomb inside his pyramid. It was outside nearby. You'll notice these little boat pits they got here. There's one also nearby near the Great Pyramid. Uh, which is a huge one they reconstructed. And uh, they believe that the Egyptians would actually put in these um, boats uh, for the pharaoh, thinking that they would need it in the afterlife, like a celestial voyage. So not only did he get that, he got like food and they put in like statues that might be servants to, to aid him in the afterlife. So they're really big into the afterlife stuff, you know, the Egyptians, and they really thought their souls were immortal, you know. So that's enough about, um, you know, talking about, um, you know, um, probably lecturing up on Egypt that I have overall. I think next what I'm going to do uh, is I'm going to go ahead and review a little bit. Uh, and that'll be it for today uh, about that. And then, uh, of course, on Wednesday, I'll try to cover as much as I can uh, to wrap up um, on, of course, Egypt. So. Uh, let me go ahead uh, and also, I haven't reviewed yet because if you think about it, you know, um, 
first lecture, of course, I just had kind of lecture on the background of Egypt. So let me go ahead and lecture at least on some of it, and then I'll wrap up the rest. Of, I'll review later the rest, of course, hopefully on the next class. So it says up here, what are some unique, what are some uh, geographic features that make the Nile unique? Well, I told you uh, the fact that the Nile River is one of the longest rivers in the world. It's around 4,200 miles long, like the longest one longer than like, the Amazon. It's also famous for um, its um, uh, the way it um, flows. It flows from south to north, starting in East Central Africa, and flows out into the Mediterranean Sea. So I think part of it starts in uh, Ethiopia, and the other part starts way down in East Central Africa, flowing northward to the, around the equator. That's why it flows um, northward because the equator is sloping down along with escarpments that slope into the Mediterranean Sea. Uh, what famous quote is attributed to um, Herodotus? Well, I've told you about Herodotus. He was the first to write about ancient Egypt in book two of the histories of Herodotus. Egypt was, uh, and Herodotus was the one who said the famous quote. He said that Egypt was the gift of the Nile. What he meant by gift he said that basically uh, without the river, you wouldn't have had like the fertile water and the like the silt. And that would, wouldn't have led to farming. Farming wouldn't have led to civilization. So, um, so it was a gift from the gods. At least the Egyptians thought it was. Gift of the Nile. Uh, what two tributaries form the main trunk of the Nile River? Uh, of course, they are, of course, the Blue Nile. And the White Nile. The Blue Nile, of course, starts like in Ethiopia, flows into Sudan. And then the White Nile starts in Lake Victoria, flows northward into Sudan. And the two meet at Khartoum and form one trunk uh, there. Uh, there's some terms, of course, you need to know about ancient Egypt. The cataract was that. Well, if you know about the Nile River, it flows down these waterfalls between what is Khartoum in Aswan, Egypt. Uh, and uh, cataract is a Greek term uh, that meant waterfall. And the Nile goes down like six waterfalls as it flows northward from northern Sudan into southern Egypt. And they, of course, been numbered later by the British uh, in the 1800s, one to six. Kemet is the uh, hieroglyph name for uh, what the Egyptians called Egypt. It meant the it meant uh, the black land because uh, of the fertile soil of Egypt. So Kemet, black land, and then Deshret was the Egyptian hieroglyph name for what they call the desert areas of Egypt that were infertile, which means red land. Uh, what was the main season of Egypt when the Nile flooded? It was called Aket, and uh, Aket occurred around the summer months, three or four months of the year. And the river would flood and inundate, and that was considered the most important season of Egypt because uh, it was important towards the growing season. Uh, they had two other seasons, too, I told you about. One called Peret, P-E-R-E-T. Peret was like the sowing season. And they also had um, uh, Shema, S-H-E-M-U. Shema was like the what they call the harvest season, although probably they had two harvest seasons. Mostly uh, Egypt was known for mostly growing like type of grains, which were made the different foods with bread being the most main diet of most like workers, like the lower class workers anyway, beer and bread. Uh, what two Egyptian states emerged at the end of the Neolithic period? Uh, you had the um, upper kingdom and the lower kingdom. Uh, the upper kingdom was a state which developed in Southern Egypt in the upper valley of the Nile River Basin. Uh, the rulers had like white crowns. And then the uh, king that was, uh, and then the kingdom that was in the north uh, was the lower kingdom. That was in lower Egypt, which is around the Delta area in northern Egypt. And the kings of that state had like a red crown. Which king unified Egypt? That was King Menes. Uh, who the Egyptians later called Narmer, originally called Narmer. And um, Menes or Narmer was the king that unified Egypt into one state. He took the two 
kingdoms, the upper kingdom and the lower kingdom. He was a king from the upper kingdom. And he merged them together as one state uh, throughout Egypt. Uh, Narma Armenes was also the king that founded the uh, their administrative capital, uh, Memphis. He also founded one of their first dynasties. And he also was one of the first to wear the double crown, which was red and white, which symbolized both states. Uh, what are the three main historical kingdoms or periods of Egypt that are famous? So you've got, of course, the Old Kingdom, which we talked about today, the Middle Kingdom, and the New Kingdom. That's the chronological order of the main states of Egypt or kingdoms overall. There's those intermediate periods, which uh, we'll talk about some of those later, like the second intermediate period that exists. But try to remember those, especially the chronological order of it. What was the cult of Amun Ra? That was just the nickname of what they called the state cult religion of Egypt, which was the god Amun. It was like a state god, uh, which was the, the king of the Egyptian gods and most powerful. Uh, it was like a solar creator god. It was later merged with the sun god Ra, which is why sometimes people call it Amun Ra. What were other major gods of Egypt that were important? Uh, you also had the god um, Anubis, uh, which was the jackal-headed god of mummification, who was a judge of the dead. You had Horus, uh, the falcon god, who was the god of kingship, uh, also a sky god. Uh, most of the Egyptian gods were kind of seen as a living version of Horus. Uh, uh, Isis was believed to be Horus's mother in some mythologies. Uh, Isis was the goddess, Egyptian goddess of fertility, love, sex, alcohol. Her husband was Osiris in a lot of mythologies. Osiris was the king of the dead in ancient Egypt. Uh, what else we talked about? Um, Set or Seth was the brother of Osiris. Uh, he was the god of um, chaos, deserts, and fertility, and also storms. He was the one that tried to steal the throne uh, from Osiris. Uh, Toth, yeah, Toth was another one. The god Toth, Toth was uh, the bird god, uh, usually associated with like hieroglyphics and writing in ancient Egypt. He was the god that gave the Egyptians papyrus. Uh, he was the one that sometimes is associated with like Egyptian like knowledge, like science, math, medicine. Uh, and then uh, I thought I also added Sobek. Sobek was a famous Egyptian crocodile god associated with um, mostly war, the symbol of the pharaoh, and also, of course, a god of you know of the crocodiles. What was mummification? Uh, mummification is, of course, the Arabic nickname. Uh, for what they refer to as in Egypt as Egyptian funerary practices, how they bury their dead. And it's been used, of course, with other peoples like the Incas who did kind of something similar to that uh, a long time ago. Uh, the origin of the word mummy is an Arabic word for the word mamiya. Uh, and mamiya is a, is a term in Arabic that was uh, what, they, what they called um, either tar pitch or like an asphalt type material that was used in the embalming process in mummification. It was actually poured on the body and I think even on the coffins as well. I just kind of went through a few processes, but they think there may have been numerous, as many, I think as we've seen about eight to 10 processes they may have actually gone through uh, total. Uh, but the main process, of course, they did was they had to remove all the organs of the body uh, minus usually the heart, which they kept in the body uh, because of the afterlife. Uh, and then the organs were put into what they call canopic jars, uh, which canopic jars are these clay vessels that were supposed to protect the organs. I, I wouldn't worry about the gods and all that, but the nickname of the four gods that protected your organs in ancient Egypt were called the four sons of horse. We'll go through all the, I don't think you have to know all the gods. It's so you already got enough gods, remember, anyway. And um, so they protected, and then usually the organs were salted. And then um, what would happen after that, they would then stuff your body cavity with different 
ingredients. And then the main process, which took about 40 days, they would uh, cover your whole body with mineral salt, which the Greeks called natron, N-A-T-R-O-N. Uh, and that process was the most important because uh, it helped with preservation of the body and got, got rid of moisture. Then they would pour that tar pitch or whatever material, oil material over your body um, and then start wrapping your body in multiple layers of linen cloth strips. And so that's like the main processes, which they had all those things they would add to the body to, you know, later as well. But that natron part is like really considered like it's the most famous part that really helps, suppose, help with preservation of the body, embalming it. Uh, quickly, I'll go through one more slide or review. Uh, what dynasties dominated the Old Kingdom? Uh, the main ones were 3rd, 4th, 5th, 6th dynasties. Uh, some people do believe the 7th and 8th for some reason, but 4th dynasty was the most famous of the uh, Old Kingdom. And, of course, later in modern times, they called the Old Kingdom the Age of Pyramids. Of course, the reason for that was the Old Kingdom was the peak period of pyramid building in Egypt which were built for, you know, massive tombs. Uh, and I told you they may have at one point built as many as like 80 pyramids in Egypt. Fourth Dynasty built the most famous ones, the Giza pyramids. Uh, what Abydos, Saqqara, Giza examples of in ancient Egypt. Uh, those were uh, famous necropolis sites uh, that are found in Egypt, most, of course, on the West Bank. Abydos, of course, was originally the site of, like where Narmer was buried. Saqqara, third dynasty uh, necropolis site where um, Zoser and Emotep built the first step pyramid. Giza, of course, where the Khufu and the fourth dynasty built the Giza pyramids. Um, also, uh, you can throw in, I told you about Midam, uh, Dasher. Uh, those are necropolis sites where they built pyramids. And don't forget the Valley of the Kings, which is part of the New Kingdom, was also a necropolis site, but they built rock cut tombs that were kind of secretly buried uh, inside mountains. While we're Mastaba, Mastaba uh, were these um, ancient um, Egyptian mud brick tombs that they constructed in Egypt, starting back during Narmer's and the Old Kingdom's time. And uh, the term Mastaba was an Arabic term uh, that the Arabs used or coined, which described the fact that they were made of mud brick or stone and it looked like a bench. So Masaba meant either mud bench or stone bench is what it meant. Uh, what dynasty developed the first step pyramid? That was the um, the um, pharaoh of uh, the pharaoh of Zoser um, who uh, ruled the third dynasty? The third dynasty one, of course, built the step pyramids. That's all they pretty much built was step pyramids. And um, his pyramid, called different names, Pyramid of, of Zoser, was built at Saqqara, which is a burial comp, uh, necropolis site there near, near what is Cairo. And uh, they believe that this pyramid um, was the first stone building ever built, maybe to a height of about 205 feet tall. And became his royal tomb. Um, who was the architect who built it? As you saw in the video, and of course I've talked about it before, uh, Emotep uh, was believed to be some kind of famous, powerful minister uh, that was under King Zoser. Uh, and he was some kind of polymath and priest that was an architect uh, who's been, you know, borrowed in modern like Hollywood type movies. Uh, today, which I don't know if it's exactly the same kind of guy, but that's basically where the name originated from overall. So anyway, I um, think that's where I'm going to stop today. I, I know um, on Wednesday I'll move on and I'll talk about, uh, of course, getting into like the development of hieroglyphs and how it got translated due to the uh, discovery of the Rosetta Stone, which was found in 1799. Uh, by Napoleon Bonaparte's uh, French force that invaded Egypt. So we'll get into that. Uh, and then I'm, I am going to talk about the New Kingdom also as well. I'll get into 
I'll talk about all the different famous pharaohs that were part of that period and the Valley of the Kings that, that of course, was constructed as a burial uh, plot for all these famous pharaohs. And uh, hopefully I'll try to wrap up a majority of, um, you know, the material uh, for ancient Egypt, because I am getting close to, a you know, our first exam, which I hope to, you know, give you next week, uh, probably maybe next Monday, possibly uh, overall. But uh, as of now, uh, of course, uh, y'all need to be, you know, thinking about um, trying to wrap up various assignments uh, that you've got. Uh, coming up, remember I told you you've got those two Canvas quizzes that you've got right now in quizzes. Make sure you get those wrapped up uh, this week. you got the one on the Seven Wonders of Ancient Egypt documentary. Uh, so watch that and complete that assignment. Then you also got the um, one on Ancient Mesopotamia. You still need to finish that too as well. Uh, it's due Wednesday, uh, September 16th, but I might even, I'll probably give you a day or two to try to wrap it up. Because uh, I'm sure I'll have some that don't finish it on time like they should. Uh, but that's it for today, uh, pretty much. Uh, if you have any other questions, uh, let me know. Uh, you know, um, send send comments. Um, you know, questions uh, to my to my YouTube channel. Uh, if you have any, of uh, course, questions about anything, remember you do uh, get, of course, bonus points. Uh, for, you know, sending me comments, questions uh, during the semester. Uh, just comment through YouTube about it. If you got some other question, like administrative type question about the class in general, just email me uh, from my, you know, my email address that you'll have overall. So that's it today. Hope you'll have a good afternoon and I'll see you Wednesday, uh, of course, later. I'll put up an announcement, of course, about future lecture we'll have, which I'll try to wrap up uh, ancient Egypt in a part three lecture. So y'all, y'all take care. Uh, have a good rest.